Hey guys, this is test 58 game 4. This is the summer school courses game. It's an in-out game, also known as selection. We know this because they give us seven variables, HLM, PSTW, of which we are going to have to choose at least three in. So I put three spaces here in the in column. Now they give us a bunch of conditional rules here, but not like we typically have. Typically in in-out games, we have a bunch of what I call positive arrow negative rules, like this, you know, positive arrow negative rules, as well as some negative arrow positive rules. Now, positive arrow negative means at least one out, whereas negative arrow positive means at least one in. However, in this game, all of the rules start with positive diagrams if H is in, if M is in, if W is in, and then end with things being forced out as a result, ending on a negative not S, not M, not P, not T, not P, not S. So for this reason, this is not our ordinary in-out game like we had in the second game of this exam, you know, Test 58 Game 2, where we had a mix of both positive arrow negatives and negative arrow positives. This game is very different. So for this reason, I'm not going to try and link everything together like I typically do. We don't have any of the negative arrow positives, only positive arrow negatives. So for this reason, I'm simply going to write out each of the rules as it is written, and then I'll make some inferences regarding what has to be out as a result. So we've got if H is in, then both S and M are out. So H in requires S out and M out. The next rule tells us if M is in, then we're going to lose both P and T. So if M is in, P is out and T is out. And finally, if W is in, then we're going to lose both P and S. So lots of what I call positive then negatives as you see if we have each of these things in we lose each of these things. So I'm gonna put down some rules on the diagram here main diagram of in-out table regarding minimums. If we have H in then we will lose both S and M. So we can infer from this that we will always lose at least one of H and S and we will always lose at least one of H and M. So in the out column I'm going to put down H slash S, meaning at least one of those two things must be out at all times, and of course, perhaps both. I'm not going to do H then not M though, because I've already written H here, and I already have M over here. I want to save M to use it for the next rule. So if M is in, then we lose both P and T, meaning if M is in, then P is out, and if M is in, then T is out. So we always lose at least one of M and P. I'm going to put down M slash T in the out column, meaning at least one of those things is always out. I'm going to save the P here because I'm going to need it for the final rule regarding W. I've already used up not S previously in the first one, so I'm going to use W then not P down at the bottom, meaning if at least one of W slash P is always out. So in every single valid scenario for this game, we're losing at least one of HS, at least one of MT, at least one of W and P. So at least three things out are from a total of seven, Therefore, we have a maximum of four in. So either we have four in and three out, or we have three in and four out. So two different main possibilities for the game based upon what these two distributions are like. Now, of course, in making this H, you know, HS thing, MT, WP, I haven't used up all the rules for the game. I haven't addressed the conflict between H and M, meaning at least one of those two guys is always out. And then when I did M, then not T, I never addressed the rule regarding at least one of M and P always out. And then the rule regarding W and P, not P, I never addressed the rule regarding W and not S. So I still have H, then not M, M, then not P, and W, then not S. I still have those rules left to address and keep in mind over the course of the game. So I'm going to get rid of all this and write that separately to save some space on the screen here. So here are the two different possibilities for the game. One where we have four in and three out one where we have three in and four things out. So I put another space down here at the bottom, another space over here. Here are the rules that have not yet been addressed. We'll have to keep, we'll have to keep these in mind over the course of the game. I, I could combine the M's, but I'm just not going to bother for simplicity here. We've got the three different rules left to deal with, and we have to consider which of these two diagrams we're going to have to work with over the course of the game. So when we have all three of these in, out, everything else has to be in as a result because the out column is full. So we're going to have one of SH in, one of TM in, 
one of PW in, as well as L. In the other diagram, though, we have no clue what's going to be out and what's going to be in. There's still a lot more ambiguity here. So we don't know which one we're going to use. It could be either one. But we've determined a great deal up front that we'll make use of over the course of the game. So question number 18 is a typical orientation question. We're just going to take one rule at a time and apply that rule to all five choices looking for violations. So, for example, we know that we've always got a lack at least one of HS, one of MT, one of WP, initial inference. So choice A is gone because it has both H and S, so we can eliminate that off the bat. You know, we have to use the rule that at least one of the MT is always out, and choice E contains both of them, so E can be eliminated off the bat. We know we've got a lack at least one of WP, so choice D can be eliminated since it has both W and P listed. We're down to B and C. Now we know that H and M conflict as well, a rule that we did not reflect on the main diagram. Choice B has both H and M, therefore B is gone leaving C for number 18. Next, number 19, what's the maximum number of courses the student can take? We've seen it's either three or four due to the fact that three always have to be out at least, so therefore four is the maximum, choice D. Next, number 20, if both P and W were out. So this could never happen in the four in, three out diagram because there's only space enough to have one of PW out, not both. So we're gonna use the other diagram. We're gonna put W out as well as P out, which means that one of HS will be in, one of TM will be in, and then L will have to be in also due to the fact that there's no room for it to go out. So they're asking us, what else, what could the student lack? Could the student lack both H and L? No, that's impossible because L has to be in. As such, A is eliminated. Next, looking at B, could they lack both H and M? Well, if they lacked both H and M, then we'd have to have both S and T in, but that works out perfectly fine. That's not a problem at all. S and T do not conflict. We could have S, T, L in, and then have H, M, W, P out. Works perfectly fine. As such, B is our answer to number 20. I will go through the rest, though. Next, looking at C, H and S both out. No, we only have room for one of them out. The other has to be in, so C is gone. Looking at D, could they lack both L and M? No, L has to be in once again, so D is gone. Then looking at E, could they lack both S and T? Well, if S and T were both out, then we would have to have H and M both in, but H and M conflict due to one of the original rules of the game. So for that reason, E is gone as well, leaving B. Next, number 21, what would happen if M were in? So if M were in on the diagram on the left, M in requires T out, and M also conflicts with both H and P. As such, H will have to be out, and P will have to be out, meaning that W will be in, and S will be in. So our four things in are S, M, W, L, our three things that are H, T, P. Of course, that's this diagram right here. I have not addressed the other diagram. So in the other diagram, we know that if M is in, then we have to lack, of course, P, H, and T. So T is going to be out, P is going to be out, H is going to be out, of course. And then something else could be out as well. We don't know what. So there's still some ambiguity here. We know that one of W slash S always have to be out, and those are, that has not yet been discussed here, so I'm going to put S slash W in the out column, and then W slash S in the in column, since there's no more room in the out column. So we're going to have to, you know, we've got, let's see, what, we, what have we addressed? Uh, H, we've addressed M, we've addressed P and S and W and T leaving L. So L has to be in. They're asking us what course must the student also take, there's a lot of ambiguity in this diagram on the right here. I mean, W could be in or S, but there's not enough room for both, whereas they are both in in the diagram on the left. But L is constant across both here. So L does have to be in no matter what, and E is our answer for 21. If you had only done the four in, three out diagram, you would not have arrived at an answer, of course, because S, M, W, L are all listed here, and they made S, W, and L all choices for this question. But you have to do the three in, four out diagram to learn that L is the constant across both, so ease our answer to 21. Next question, number 22, they're asking us, of which pairing must the student take at least one of those classes, at least one, the other, or both? So we actually have a great deal of previous work that we could use to help ourselves out here. Back in question number 18, choice C, we lacked both L and W. As such, we know that we do not need to have at least one of them, and C can be eliminated. Back in question number 21, which we just did, when we had three in and four out, we knew that we could easily lack both H and S, therefore A is gone, 
Additionally, we saw that it was possible to lack both T and W, so E is gone. Then back in question number 20, we saw that we could have lacked both M and P. When we lacked both P and W, we could have lacked M as well, as you see from question 20, choice B. As such, D is gone, leaving B by process of elimination for number 22. Next question, number 23. This is a rule substitution question. So they're asking us to remove the rule, the rule telling us that M in requires you know, P and T to be out, and replace it with a rule that is equivalent, no more limiting and no less limiting. So if a choice you know, violates a previous, it would, would render a previous valid scenario invalid, then it cannot be the correct answer. And also if it is too, if it is too open-ended and not restrictive enough, it's also not going to be our answer. We need to be precisely equivalent to the original rule. So we already know from the original rules that M conflicts with H, P, and T. So the only variables that M could ever appear in with are L, S, and W. Choice B says this, so it's our answer. It's simply another way of saying something we already know. So if B were true, instead of, instead of the rule that M conflicts with both P and T, it would have an identical effect.